On the Russian side of the International Space Station, two small modules serve as important hubs for docking and spacewalks. Piers and Poisk. These are two of the smaller ISS modules, but they added additional docking ports and increased the science output of the Russian segment. While Poisk still remains at the orbiting laboratory, the other, Piers, was recently decommissioned and gave us all a sense of what is to inevitably come at the end of the useful life of the International Space Station. Hi, I'm Derek and my channel Orbital Velocity is all about telling the story of human spaceflight and our journey toward becoming a multi-planetary species. But before we begin, I want to welcome all my new subscribers and thank those for leaving comments and engaging in live streams. I sincerely appreciate it. Now, on to talking about the Russian Piers and Poisk modules. Built by RKK Energia, Piers was the third Russian module added to the International Space Station and the sixth pressurized component overall. Piers is Russian for pier, like a pier for a boat. It is also sometimes called Docking Compartment 1 or DC-1. It was originally designed for the Mir-2 space station, a project that was merged with the ISS program in 1993. Unlike the two other Russian modules at the time, Zarya and Zvezda, Piers required a modified cargo spacecraft service module in order to guide it to the outpost. Together called Progress DC-1, the spacecraft module duo was launched atop a Soyuz U rocket on September 14, 2001 from Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Speaking of which, before we continue, be sure to launch that like button into orbit. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and shows me what videos you are interested in. After taking three days to catch up with the ISS, Piers docked with the Earth-facing port of the Zvezda service module. At the time, Piers was the smallest pressurized component of the ISS, not counting docking adapters. It was 4.9 meters long, with a diameter of 2.6 meters. Overall, its mass was about 3,600 kilograms, with a pressurized volume of around 13 cubic meters. On the end that docked to the Zvezda module was a hybrid Russian docking system, which is a combination of the traditional probe and drogue soft dock mechanism with the hard dock collar used by the APAS-95 system used by the space shuttle and pressurized manic adapters on the US side of the outpost. On the Earth-facing side of piers was the passive side of the more traditional probe and drogue system that allowed for docking of Progress and Soyuz spacecraft throughout its life. When these visiting vehicles were docked, Piers was able to transfer fuel both directions between Zvezda and Zarya and Soyuz and Progress spacecraft. Transferring fuel to Zvezda and Zarya allows those modules' tanks to continue to have fuel in them for attitude adjustments and orbit boosting. The Piers module also had two airlock hatches for spacewalks to be performed by astronauts and cosmonauts wearing Russian Orlan spacesuits. It took three spacewalks by the Expedition 3 crew in 2001 to configure the module for operations at the ISS. This included the attachment of the two Strela cargo cranes that were added to the ISS via space shuttle missions in 1999 and 2000. Initial Russian segment plans called for Piers to be replaced with a larger universal docking module, which was expected to provide life support and capabilities for up to six crew members. However, with scarce funding, the universal docking module fell behind schedule and was canceled when several Russian research modules were also canceled. Later plans called for Piers to be removed as early as 2013 to be replaced by the much larger Nauka multi-purpose laboratory module. However, manufacturing problems and quality control issues delayed its launch until 2021. Between 2001 and 2009, the Russian segment of the ISS didn't change very much. It wouldn't change really until the addition of the Poisk module, a second docking compartment identical to Piers. Poisk was originally designed as a second docking compartment before it was initially cancelled in 2001. However, in 2008, it was redesignated as Mini Research Module Number 2 and added to the ISS assembly schedule. Poisk, which means search in Russian, was actually launched before the delivery of RASFET, which itself was designated as Mini Research Module Number 1. Poisk is nearly identical to Piers. It was sent to the ISS in the same fashion as its twin with a Progress Service Module. Launch atop a Soyuz U rocket took place from Baikonur Cosmodrome on November 10, 2009, with docking occurring on the space-facing port of the Zvezda module two days later. Over the years, Poisk functioned as a docking port for Soyuz and Progress vehicles and was used for external research experiments. In the year leading up to the launch of the Naoka module and subsequent retirement of Piers, Poisk was ready to be used as an airlock for the first time. The first spacewalk occurred out of that module in November of 2020. It took several spacewalks to disconnect various power and data cables from Piers to the rest of the ISS. The Nauka Multipurpose Science Module finally launched on July 21, 2021. 
To make way for the new module, Progress MS-16, which was docked with peers at the time, departed with the two-decade-old module kind of as a tug on July 26th. This made peers the first permanent ISS module to be decommissioned. After Progress MS-16 and peers left, a deorbit burn was performed to allow both vehicles to safely burn up over the Pacific Ocean. Naoka docked in its place a few days later, but its journey is a video for another time. Piers and Poisk are small but important modules, with Piers being the first module to be decommissioned, giving all of us a little sample of what's to come for the whole of the ISS sometime in the next decade. What do you think of these modules? Let me know in the comments below. And if I've earned it, it'd mean the world to me if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share this video with friends and family. It helps support the channel and also lets me know what topics you are all interested in regarding human space exploration. If you'd like to take a couple extra steps to help support Orbital Velocity, there's a link to my Patreon page in the description below. Finally, be sure to follow Orbital Velocity on Twitter and Facebook. You can also visit orbital-velocity.com for even more space-related content. Links are in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, Ad Astra.